Welcome to my very first YouTube video. I'm Jasmine. I hope you're strapped in because I guarantee you it's going to be a bumpy ride. Okay, so today's video is a direct result of a fantastic weekend that I had just this past weekend on Labor Day weekend in Miamisburg, Ohio at QuailCon which was hosted by some great people, My Shire Farm, uh, Whiskey Tango Farms, and a whole bunch of incredible quail people. I had the incredible opportunity to co-host a butcher class, a live butcher class, with two great guys, uh, Brad, a great, uh, very involved person in our quail community, and Chris, from Slightly Rednecked. We had such a great turnout. We had incredible feedback. Each of us has a slightly different focus when it comes to our butchering methods. And so by popular demand, here I am in my kitchen showing you guys my method of processing quail. Before we get started, I do wanna do a quick disclaimer. Uh, it is going to be a graphic video because I really think that it's important for people to know what they're looking at when they're processing an animal, especially if it's for the first time. So if you are squeamish, can't handle guts, this is probably not the video for you. And I would say go ahead and click off and come back later when I have some other fun video that does not involve processing an animal. But those of you who are brave, you're ready to take your self-sufficiency skills to the next level we are going to get this show on the road. When it comes to processing animals, especially if it's your first time, there has to be a slight mind shift change. So I am an avid animal lover. I absolutely enjoy being a homesteader here, but I also know that there's an importance of being connected to um, where and how your food that ends up on your dinner plate comes from and how it's processed. And so um, switching the mindset to, um, man, I am, I'm killing an animal, we're switching that to this animal has been raised with great care by me and I realize that it's a sacrifice on their part to be able to nourish me and appreciate that that is what their purpose is um, on the homestead. And so when you kind of get that mindset, it takes some of that heartbreak away, especially I think for women who are trying to um, do this pioneer life. <laughs> so um, just keep that in mind that when you know they have a lifetime for their lifetime, no matter how long or short it is, of being well cared for and a split second of um, bad to be able to provide us with great nourishment. So that is that's an important thing that I like to say uh, you know taking an animal's life is never easy and it's not a fun task but it absolutely should make you feel empowered that you're able to provide uh, nourishment for your family through the animals you raise all right enough talking let's get down to what do you need to do this quail are easy as you can tell we are in my kitchen let's go down the list of things that you need first off a clean work area space that you feel comfortable in so if that's outside on your porch, in your kitchen, wherever it is, just make that space someplace that you are comfortable working in. A bowl of some sort uh, to hold the carcasses once they are processed. Um, icy cold water or ice water is ideal for that and I'll tell you why you need that. Um, if you're going to save any um, organs, things like that, another bowl set to the side to keep those organized until you're ready to put them in bags is a great idea. Normally, when I'm processing quail, I have about 20 to 30 birds that I'm wanting to process in one sitting. So I will use a five gallon bucket and repurpose those feed bags that those quail go through as part of my waste collection. So. Today, because I'm only gonna be doing a couple, and this is just a great example, you literally can use just a small waste bin, and I just have an old grocery bag in here, and that's going to be what I'm going to put the entrails and any extra waste products in to there, then I can tie it up, and it's nice and tidy. So kitchen shears that come apart are going to be your best friend when it comes to uh, processing quail. 
So they have a nice straight edge and this is important because you're really just doing a couple of snips and you're done. But the reason they you want them breaking apart is sometimes feathers, blood, and other uh, bacteria can get caught up in between the blades and you really want to be able to have really clean tools to work with. So. Um, I have two pairs to show you because I think that it's important to know that it doesn't matter what your budget is. You can do this extremely well um, and your tools are your best friend, but you don't have to spend a lot of money. So I do happen to have a pair of Cutco Super Shears that were gifted to me and my husband a long time ago when we were first married. They are incredible scissors. They hold up really well. They're very heavy and a little bit awkward for me when it comes to processing quail and they are expensive. They are incredible, but they're absolutely not necessary for such a small bird like a quail. Uh, great for processing my turkeys, my ducks, the geese, chickens, because they are heavier duty, but they're not necessary for the quail. So what do I use instead? I use these $10 for a two pack uh, kitchen shears from Amazon. Their brand is QM Vest. QM vest. I have no idea how to say that, but these have processed probably, I don't know, 300 or more quail, just this pair alone, and they're still sharp. We use them in our class at QuailCon. So if you are looking for a good, inexpensive pair, you don't already have one, check this out, get them. All right, so a good pair of shears. I like to have a cutting board just to keep my counters clean when I am doing the actual butchering and a couple of optional things to have around are an apron. I have so sweetly coined this one, the murder apron. Um, it just helps to keep your clothes tidy and um, you know you don't have to worry about ruining, ruining anything. If you have pockets, even better, you can have your scissors in here if you need to. And then another option, especially if you're a little bit squeamish about handling the guts or seeing blood on your hands, a great tool is your nitrile gloves. You can get these in a big old pack. I just get mine from Harbor Freight and they come in a nice box. So if you want to keep your hands, nails, all that stuff tidy, grab yourself some gloves. Um, and then as far as the end processing, I make sure that I have a pan after I've rinsed all the birds off to help them rest in the refrigerator. And then I do vacuum seal mine before they go into the freezer as well. So those are just the tools that you need, but at the end of the day, you need a bucket, scissors, and a bowl to keep those birds in. Let's get started. I'm gonna go through and show you where I actually um, place my scissors, why it's important, because um, I'm probably not gonna show you the actual dispatch. I suppose YouTube frowns upon that, but. Um, I have a male and I have a female so that you can see the difference of the anatomy when you are processing them. Sometimes the organs can look a little confusing and some of the discoloration on a hen can make you think something's wrong with your bird, but in fact it's a healthy hen and there's no problems, all right? How I bring my birds in is actually in a small tote with some mesh where the lid clips on. That way I can access them from the top instead of having to worry about opening like a cat carrier from the front, things like that, you just want a quick access where you can open the top, grab the bird that you need and close it. It keeps everybody calm and there's a lot less chaos. All right, so once you've grabbed your bird, um, where you place them in your hand, at least for me, I have teeny tiny hands. Um, I like to have the bird's breast bone in the palm of my hand. Hold on. And then the wings securely tucked underneath my thumb and my ring finger. And this allows me to access where I need to dispatch and it keeps the birds from their wings flapping everywhere. So you can see really quick sh 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 where my hands are and then that holds the bird there. So where we are going to um, put our shears is going to be right behind their jaw. If you try to do this right by their neck, this is going to create a very traumatic experience for you and it's not necessarily going to be the cleanest cut on your bird. So the goal is to have one fast, um, purposeful snip and then done and she's 
You drank water right before this, didn't you? Okay. So again, we are going to be processing here. So when you use your shears, you are going to make sure that you come all the way here, all right? We are not going to be um, using the tip of the scissors because that's not going to create a full cut. Um, you wanna open those up and bring that here. So this is the part where we're gonna just play elevator music and I'll go ahead and do the processing. Okay, so that part is done, the dispatch is done. What I'm doing now is holding the bird inside the bucket so that there's not going to have any um, spray anywhere. And that will happen on occasion if you are um, not holding the wings well or you have, you're distractible and you pull the bird out way sooner than is necessary for um, allowing them to bleed out. So. I do take about 15 to 30 seconds to fully drain the blood out of the bird. Um, the reason I do this is uh, it makes it a lot easier to remove all of the limbs that you need off, um, but it also will have a better flavor. You don't have to use salt to pull out any leftover blood inside the bird. It's just a cleaner deal. And if you need it to be kosher, or um, halal, that's also an incredibly important part. So I wanna show you really quick, now that she is completely um, drained, that the feathers will fall down when the bird is completely done. So that way you know, there'll have some vibrations in your hand, you may have um, you know, some flitting and movement of the wings, and that's just the nerves being um, deprived of oxygen, and so since their head is no longer connected to their body, they're not physically feeling pain, it's just the nerves reacting. So it may feel like, oh my gosh, did I actually process my bird? Did I actually do the deed? And if they are having those vibrations, you did. So the next thing is I really prefer to leave my birds whole, and this is completely for aesthetics. I do skin them. I don't mess around with plucking because of time constraints, but I like to have a beautiful bird sitting in my plate and so that is going to be some of the details that I take a little extra time to do. So my method by no means is the fastest method or the most like time efficient method but for me and what is important to me is aesthetics I'll be able to present my family with a nice looking bird that I feel proud about. We're going to start by removing the wings and this is the butchering process. You can very easily um, remove them straight, straight next to the breast at the shoulder, and that's completely fine. There's really no meat to be had on the wings. However, because I like to have the aesthetics of what looks to be like a miniature chicken, a tiny chicken, I leave part of the wing there. So I'm gonna show you really quick where I remove the wings. You can see there's a joint here. That joint is absolutely where we're going to cut. And when you cut in between a joint, there's actually fluid there and it keeps the birds from having um, any sharp bones. So this is what we cut off and then we're left with a partial wing. If you wanna save this for crafting, you absolutely can. And then we're gonna to go to the other side and do the same thing. You'll notice that I'm coming from the front um, where there's very few feathers. That just makes a much cleaner cut and cleaner on your surface. Now the next thing we're going to do is remove the feet and for two purposes, for again for aesthetics and also for safety in packaging, especially for your um, vacuum seal packages, you're going to want to process your bird at the actual joint. You don't want to go below it or above it because again you have that fluid right kind of in the knee. So what I suggest doing is finding the notch and you can feel it with your finger first and you'll cut right in the notch and it will create a smooth finished foot or leg where you have no sharp edges and it's not going to puncture through the plastic of your uh, vacuum sealed bag. So again, we're looking at this notch here it's going to have almost like a little divot and that's right where your blade is gonna go into this angle here, all right? So if you go below, 
that is going to create a sharp edge. If you go above, that is going to create a sharp edge. So you're wanting to go right in the angle. Really simple. Now the feet can be saved for animal treats, jewelry, whatever you want to do. I set those aside and save them. So now it comes to um, what we call, I call, <laughs> undressing your bird, which is skinning them. And if you think about it, you're basically going to unzip the feathers all the way down to the vent and then you're going to take the coat or the jacket off the shoulders and then the legs out of the pants and that's going to have a nice whole pelt to work with so you don't need to use your scissors for this but you absolutely can you're starting at the top where you've already made a cut um, one tiny snip and you'll be able to whoops um, pull it's almost like a wet paper towel and this is going to pull the uh, skin right down as an unzipped, I have a cat sitting here with me. So we have now unzipped that jacket. So because I left the shoulders and the first part of the wing intact, I'm going to hold my bird by the breast in between the breastbone and pull down to take the skin off. I'm gonna to go to the other side and I apologize if this isn't super clear, but you're basically gonna hold your thumb on a bone and your finger on a bone and pull down. And you're wanting to hold on to the skin rather than the feathers because they are going to pull out if you are not careful. So now you've got your neck and that's really simple to just take your thumb and it'll peel away the skin. And then you can pull straight down. That's part of the crop, you can pull straight down and you will be able to see that you've exposed the back. You don't wanna pull all the way down yet. We're gonna show you how to peel this off nicely so that you have beautiful um, end results and not torn muscle. So you come to the legs and what I do is I just stick my thumb in there, push on the smooth foot piece and then you've got a hole, pull that out and bring that to the side. You'll do that with the other side as well. If you need to hold the knee to stabilize it so you're not just pulling um, the feathers, then you can do that. So now we're at the back. The back of the bird is where there is the most amount of um, a different direction of feathers. So what I like to do is hold on nice and tight and peel to the side instead of down. And there you have a super clean back without having to worry about all the extra things that happen, all right? So what we do with this, now that we have this pelt, is we just pull the whole thing, and the feathers on the tail are going to stay. If you wanted to save this pelt for crafting, again, you can do that because all the feathers are intact. Um, at this moment, I'm not gonna be saving those, and these can either go into the compost or they can be disposed of in the trash. All right, so the next thing that we have now to deal with is our tail feathers. And I like to make sure that people know that there are preening glands here, okay? So these preening glands are what the birds use to keep their feathers nice and tidy. So you may see them like rub behind their tail while they're cleaning and preening themselves. So these glands have a little bit of oil in them that help to keep those feathers looking good. We don't want those on our whole bird, so we're gonna be cutting those off. And we're gonna go from the vent, which is where they um, lay their eggs and defecate. So this angle is where we're gonna cut everything off in one big cut. So again, you've got these here. If you use their um, pelvic bones as a guide, you can go up from the vent, use that as a guide to cut that off. And again, those just go straight into the trash one big cut and we're done all right so um, I'm gonna pause for a moment I'm gonna go ahead and get the rooster done and then I'm gonna show you the differences of what the vents look like so that you're not surprised if you accidentally or purposefully process a hint so we will be right back All right, so just to get these kind of 
clear it out of the way for a moment. All right, so let's take a quick look at the vents after we have processed a hen and a roo. Now, these are standard birds, so um, they were not raised specifically to have a large amount of meat, but here we are. So this is the hen in my left hand, and this is the rooster in my right. So you can see right off the bat that we actually have an egg <laughs> coming out of our hen. So I'm going to just take that out real quick. So a quick note on these, these didn't get to go through the full bloom process if you do find eggs that are coming out of your hen. So uh, you can use them, you can absolutely eat them, but you need to eat them um, that day that you process, refrigerate them so that you don't have bacteria growing in your egg. All right, so now let's take another look. All right, so you can see that hens have what we call um, their cartridge areas where they have ink that goes onto their eggs that makes them those beautiful different speckles. Um, that is nothing to be concerned about. There is nothing wrong with this muscle tissue. You can cut it off for aesthetics, but at the end of the day, it absolutely doesn't have any change in flavor. It doesn't have anything except for the way that it looks, all right? So I leave my birds whole again for aesthetics. So I cut the necks off and I save those for my whoops for my pets or for bone broth and I'm cutting it right at the edge here so we can show you that again if you have this as their back you're going to literally cut it right where um, the, the back or the shoulders meet just a quick snip and you're done all right now when it comes to taking the organs out I again because I don't spatchcock which is taking the spine out and removing all the organs. I actually come up clean, straight up from the vent hole to the breastbone, and that gives me space to work with, now he's a very small guy, but it gives me space to work with the guts. Um, so what I start with is I stick my finger up against the inside of the breastbone and I feel for a marble sized um, hard organ and what that is is actually their gizzard and it is attached to their digestive tract and I will um, show you there's the gizzard here all right so that is basically what grinds their food and helps them to digest it and that is connected to their entrails which would be their digestive tract you don't want to keep those because they are full of bacteria and then inside so this guy has been in a molt and he's not been my ideal male but you'll find testicles heart liver lungs so he has extremely small testicles compared to um, one that is sexually mature and active and then we also have the heart his liver came out in the entrails, so I'll show you the hen's liver. So you should have those two guys there, and you'll end up with a pretty clean bird, which we'll be able to see a little bit better after we process the hen. So you can see how aesthetically pleasing this is compared to maybe having it filleted. So if you're wanting to have like a really nice looking presentation, this is what we'd go for. So after we're done, we go ahead and throw it in our ice cold water to let it start resting and move on to our hen. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're taking our scissors and we're just cutting on the edge that allows us to get inside their um, organs. So again, I'm gonna pull and look for her gizzard which is connected to all of her intestines. And I'm gonna show you the difference here between their intestines and their egg tract. All right, so normally all of this would go completely into the trash. Um, there's no reason, I guess you could give it to your chickens if you want, but I don't prefer to. So there is part of the crop and then the gizzard and all of the rest of the intestines. This. You can save the gizzard for sure for the animals um, or for yourself. Now, once you take a look inside, I don't know if you can see this or not, but 
This is the inside of a hen. And so she's going to have her oviduct and her um, eggs that are in Q inside of her, um, let's see if I can pull it all out without making a mess. Come on, all right. So this is what we call like her oviduct. So all of these little bumps here, there's no disease. It's just um, future eggs. So they have to go through the fertilization process and then they grow into larger yolks and then they go into Q to go into this big white squishy tract, which is where the egg white is um, put through. The shell is calcified and put on and then the ink pouch here will be putting the brown on the egg and then it gets pushed out. So this is all completely normal. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this bird. Now we're gonna go in to remove the heart. So you're gonna bring your finger all the way up where it is going against the breastbone and you're gonna pull down. So you'll hook right under what feels kind of like a rubbery hose and that's the heart and the trachea that's attached to the lungs. And so when you do that, you're gonna be pulling out, and this is a much better representation of nice looking organs intact. So you've got your heart and that is attached to your liver. The liver should be, it can be this color red, it can be a little pink, it can be even yellow. If it has um, white spots or it is green, you don't want to consume the liver and most likely not the bird as well if it's green. That's a sign of infection and um, sepsis. So you really don't want to consume the bird. But a nice healthy liver is a great indication of a healthy bird. And this can get saved for you, your animals. Um, and you'll see there's a little green, little green guy here. And that is the bile, uh, bile duct, which is like the, the uh, wow, my brain just stopped, gallbladder. All right, I don't take the lungs out because there's no change in flavor. If it's going to be something that's going to a restaurant or things like that, um, you would want to clean those out. Something like um, a grapefruit spoon, something small like that to scrape them out is super easy to do. Um, they're just attached to the ribs. Anyway, so that's your girl. You put her in there and now you're like, okay, what do I do now? So you do a quick cleanup. These are going to go in a bowl for my animals to eat later. Yes, even the reproductive organs, those all go in there. Clean up your mess, and then we go on to rinsing your birds, getting them um, rested in the fridge. I like to give them about 12 or overnight, 24 hours before I pack them up. The main reason for that is to allow the ring mortis to release, and that way you have less tough meat, it's a lot more tender once it's gone through rigor and then released. And then you can freeze it and then prepare it for your family at any time if you'd like. Um, is resting absolutely necessary? No. Straight on the, the grill tonight if you wanted to, just depends on what you wanna do. Okay, so that's basically it. Now we've got, um, You've been able to see a male and a female processed. I hope that you feel somewhat confident in um, processing your own birds. And you can see that there's very little mess. There are a few feathers, so those will just get a quick vacuum out. I'll have these opened up for cleaning. And in our bowl here, we have two nice looking uh, birds. If you want, you can take the fat off. If there's any feathers, you'll wanna rinse those off really well with high pressure, cold water, and um, then you'll let these rest covered on, I'll just set those here. They'll be into this. This goes in the refrigerator. Once they're pliable again, I will pack them up, put a date on it, put them in the freezer. I, I would suggest using them within a year for the best taste so that you don't have any freezer burn or anything like that. But that's it. So uh, cleanup is really easy. I get to um, have my kitchen back. Hi. <laughs> get to have my kitchen back after just a little bit of time. And um, that's it. So 
Hopefully this is helpful to those of you who either got to be part of the hands-on butcher experience at uh, QuailCon, or maybe you just had a little bit of FOMO and you wanted to see how Jasmine did it since people were talking about it, which feels really weird. <laughs> but um, either way, that's, that's how I do it here. Once you get into a rhythm, each bird should take much less than three minutes each, um, even with working on aesthetics. So don't rush through the process. Take it one step at a time. Be proud of every step that you're able to do on your own. And um, you know, this is something you really should be proud of. It's a skill that's necessary to help put food um, on your plate. So thank you guys so much for joining me on this journey of my very first YouTube video. And it won't be the last. I hope to see you again soon. Um, if you're looking forward to listening to me ramble on about things and be slightly awkward, I would invite you to subscribe to my very new channel. I'll be your friend if you'll be mine. Bye.